Hello my friends, today I'm going to show you how you can create consistency in the look, feel and color palette of your photos. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer from Vienna, Austria and I want to thank all of my patrons for supporting me and making these videos possible. Thank you and let's get started. So if you want to grow your following, get out there and make a name for yourself as a creator, an artist, a photographer. Consistency is a big part of that. The reason for that is that it is really hard uh, to build a community and a fan base and they expect from you a certain kind of style of art and of high quality content. And it is very easy to click the unsubscribe button or the dislike button. So you want to be consistent in what you are creating. And I selected three different channels. They are all about coffee. So we have more of a comparison here. And when you look at these photos, you can see they are all photographed from the same angle. So it's all top down. They are a little bit muted. They have pastel colors, soft colors in a uh, violet and pink and orange area so they feel warm and playful there's a lot of stuff going on with props so they build a nice scene uh, with these pictures and when you come back and see these photos every time you get a very nice high quality and fun experience from this channel let's look at another channel you can see here this channel is a lot more um, how can I say playful and creative with the different kind of perspective so they experiment a little bit more but you can see still there is a consistency in the color palette so you get this kind of country style vintage warm feeling with these brown and earth-like and orange colors that are in all of these pictures and a lot of this is uh, editing but some of them is also the choice of what you're photographing the scenery and what you make the subject of your photo and when we scroll down here on this channel for example we find some pictures down here and they are suddenly completely different especially this picture here with popping strong colors very candy like and it is different from the rest of the style and immediately you have this kind of feeling that the artist doesn't know what's going on, what they're doing. It's a bit all over the place just because of this one picture here, which is just different from the rest of the picture. So you can see what a huge impact it can have uh, to put something in there that doesn't fit your brand. So consistency is really is an important part. Let's look at a third channel. By the way, I'm not saying that this is any kind of a bad thing here. So they can do with their channel whatever they want. I just want to show you the impact this can have on the feeling for the channel. Here we have a third channel again. We have these playful, nice um, pastel colors. And again, they are more experimental with what they photograph. So there is sometimes outside or inside room photos of the uh, coffee shops. And then we have coffee and a lot of cakes and candy in here. And these kind of softer pastel um, pick, uh, colors, they can fit very well with this kind of situation because when you have a cake and some coffee, you sit down and relax and it's more of a soft and uh, uh, like relaxing situation. So high power colors and high contrast wouldn't probably be the best idea for that. So um, let's go over to Affinity Photo and see how we can create a consistent style for our images. So you can see here, I have selected four different pictures. Uh, the idea is that we want to create a channel that is about coffee and reading. So I'm sticking with the coffee theme, as you can see here. And I created a little kind of fake Instagram. The reason for that is that um, this gives us a white background and colors look different on the white background colors and contrast compared to the darker gray background that affinity gives us um, from its settings so um, you don't have to do that i'm just doing this uh, so you can see what i'm doing and how this compares to a white background okay and what I would suggest to you to have this consistency is to create a master file uh, with a, a certain amount of 
adjustment layers that I will create and I will show you how to create them. And you can use this master file to apply the same filters and adjust them a little bit to different pictures. And what we also will do is we will create a master photos, which means that you select one of your photos and edit it until it is the style and feeling and color palette you want to have on your channel. And then put it on top of all the layers so you can compare this picture to the other pictures that come later and get adjusted so you have this consistency and you can create it a little bit easier by comparison comparing it to a master picture or several master pictures that have the style that you want to go for okay so the layers that I would create for this, and by the way, you can create any kind of adjustment layer. So this is just to show you how to create this kind of master file. Uh, I will create uh, an adjustment layer for split toning. Split toning is an easy way to adjust colors in your picture. The reason why it's called split toning is because it splits the tonal range of the picture between the highlights and the shadows. As you can see here, and you can adjust the hue of the picture. So we will give this nice warm orange colors here, like this. And then you can play around with the saturation. You can see this has an impact on the photo that we are looking at. So you can uh, set it in a way you want to have. So we want to go for more like warm, sunny day, a little bit afternoon kind of feeling in our picture. So split toning is a good way to get started with that. Another thing that I would suggest to you and I uh, created a tutorial that explains in depth the use of the curve tool. I will link it in the video description. Have a look at that video. But curves is nice because you can do similar things like with split toning. But in addition to that, you have control, first of all, over all of the tonal range in detail. And you can make the picture darker and brighter and you can adjust the contrast in the picture. So you have a lot of possibilities with curves. Like I said, I have a a specific videos about how to use curves. In this case, we will make the colors a little bit muted by pulling up the darker colors here. And then I will go over into red and push this up a little bit so we get a little bit more warm feeling in here. As you can see, it works very well. The next thing that I want to create is an adjustment layer for HSL. And the reason I want to do that is because it has a saturation shift in here. So I can go from black and white to extremely colorful. And this means I have a quick way to adjust the saturation in the picture when I have different photos that might be more or less saturated. I have a very quick way to do that. I will set this to zero right now because we don't need it for this photo. And the last thing is something I call a light disk basically. And that's a little trick um, that consists of creating a rectangle with the rectangle tool. And uh, you want to hold your shift key and pull out until you create a nice big rectangle. And then I will zoom out a little bit more because this rectangle should be, whoops, that should be a lot bigger than our canvas that we're working on. And right now the fill color is white, but what we want to do is click up here and fill and set it to gradient. And I will put the left color, for example, on a nice orange like this. Ah, it's a bit too orange. There we go. Make it a little bit more pastel colored like this. And on the other side, I will also set a color um, a little bit going into the yellow here, make it even more pastel like this. And I will set the opacity of this one to zero. And you will think, well, if the opacity is on zero, then why do I have to uh, set a color? The reason for that is because um, the gradient is fading, not only in the transparency, but also in the color. So if this would have any kind of strange color, maybe, uh, uh, I don't know, blue or a green or something that wouldn't fit here, uh, it would still be in here until it fades out to zero. So this is why you also have to set this color. And the last thing we need to do is set this to radial. So we have a circle in the middle. 
And now we can click here on the gradient tool and this will show us our two points. And I will set one in the middle. So the orange one is in the middle and the white one is here on the edge. And what this does for us is that it gives us a nice circle that is fading with this color. As you can see here, when I move it around over the picture, I can set a fading uh, touch of color over my picture. And I'm going to set this channel to pin light down here, pin light. There we go. And it's too extreme right now, but we can reduce the opacity until we find something that looks good to us. And this gives us the ability to give a little bit of um, shine, uh, light shine uh, for the picture. Let's zoom out here again, uh, choose our rectangle and we can move it around as you see. It's a very soft effect, uh, but it gives uh, the ability. And I think this makes the picture more alive um, by giving it a gradient flow of color and light over the picture. So that can be a very nice technique to do that. Okay, so now that we have created this kind of look, and you can, by the way, this is not what you should do as a final result. This is just an inspiration. Create your own look, use your own filters and adjustments until you find something that looks good to you. So I'm not saying create exactly this. I'm saying this is the way you can create a master file just to make this completely clear. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going here to edit, copy flattened, and then we paste in the picture and I will pull this layer up here and I will call it control, control, there we go. And I will also lock this layer. So now when we look at other pictures, for example, here we have a different picture. Again, we have a book with a coffee cup. We can go back and forth. And of course, because this layer here now is sitting on top and it's just a pixel layer, it doesn't have the other effects applied to it. So I can use it as a master comparison. So that's very nice. And now I could uh, save this file as a master file with all these layers in them and just drag in other pictures that I want to have. Um, the only thing that's different for you is that you, if you, for example, go for Instagram, you want to start with a square canvas and not this kind of canvas I created here. I just created this so you have the comparison to the white background. So next thing I'm going to do is that I will, this layer that I've created before, I will uh, post into this picture here. One second, we have to... Uh, quickly create two guidelines. So I have a middle point here and you can see I selected four photos by different photographers and we want to bring them closer because right now they are all over the place and they don't look very consistent right now. So we have created this and I will just lay this over the other picture and then we are going to adjust the other four pictures. So here we have this one. Let's see. So for this, for example, I would say that we make it a little bit brighter and that we have a little bit more saturation in here, like this. Um, let's go back to the curves, go in here to red and make the brighter colors. Let's see, let's adapt this a little bit here. Uh, make it like this. Okay, good. And then we also go in here. Let's see with this adjustment. Mm, now we can leave it like that. Let's turn it off for a second. Okay. Move this over a little bit. Like that. Okay, let's go back to the other picture. And that's pretty okay, actually. So let's go and copy flatten. And then you don't have to do the copy flatten step. This is just what I'm doing uh, so I can overlay these pictures. You want to export them um, to uh, JPEG so you can put it on Instagram or the page uh, that you want to put it on. So let's go. This we already have created. There is another picture here, as you can see. Uh, I want to go back into curves, maybe reduce this a little bit. 
Let's go back to the red colors here. Remove the points we have created before. Move this maybe a little bit down. Let's turn this off for a second so that's not too bad. Um, I think in this case the light is rather coming from the other side so I'm gonna move my rectangle over to the other side like this. Okay so let's go here copy flatten and put this again in here. Paste. There we go. Okay this is maybe a bit too much so I will delete this real quick. One second. Um, let's reduce this a little bit here. Bring it down to 15%. That's a bit better. Uh, copy flatten again and bring it in here so we can put it over the other picture. And then we have just one more and then we can see the comparison between um, the different pictures. So here I want to get this light again back a bit more. Where's the light coming from? from up here so I'm gonna move this up to this side like that let's see zoom out a little bit so we have the square and uh, we can put it here okay let's zoom back in play around a little bit with the curves a little bit more should we make a little bit more contrast actually no that's okay good all right let's look in here reduce this a little bit like that okay let's compare it to the other picture um let's go into curves the blue make this a little bit more blue like that compare again that's better okay copy flattened and go over here put this in there there we go is that the right position yes nope it's not the right position we have to put it over here there we go okay so uh, now that we have adjusted these pictures real quick you can see let's remove the guidelines here you can see that now the, the look is a lot more consistent uh, than before so you can see these are more all over the place from the style. So this is more contrast. The colors are popping down here. It's rather a blue morning, like more colder feeling. This is a warmer feeling in the bed and down here we have like in the middle. Um, so it's very different. And this is a lot closer together with this kind of a bit muted uh, pastel warmish style of the pictures that come together. I would adjust this up here a little bit so there should be a little bit more blue in here which we can quickly do and this is the nice thing about um, this master file so we can just go in here and again uh, we have already uh, done this uh, blue adjustment for the other picture so I can now go and put this over here and in your case you would export it uh, again so let's paste this in here and there we go you can see now this is a lot closer um, than the other one before. And this is how you can create a master file to have more consistency in the look and feel of your pictures and give your followers, your community more of a feeling that things are going in a certain direction and they have an artistic idea and spirit behind them that is guiding the complete project. So. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial. If you like my tutorials, I do two per week, so maybe subscribe to my channel. And if you want to support me even more, you can become one of my Patreons. Uh, so hit the Patreon link uh, down in the video description. We have some great options for you. Thank you very much and see you in the next tutorial. Bye.